on the uh, AI with uh, social interactions and the transactions. Before I introduce the next speakers, I just uh, like to remind you guys. Uh, uh, okay, please screw up. Song Yi, okay, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys could could scan the QR code. To uh, we got we have uh, uh, simultaneously uh, trans translations functions uh, to help you guys to better understand these panels. Okay, uh, so next please join me in welcome our next speaker, Ray Chen, a partner at PwC. Welcome. For the introduction today, I'm very happy to attend today's conference, this training, or this activity, whatever you call it. I am uh, the accounting, uh, I'm the accounting partner from PwC, and uh, we are, I'm different. I have different backgrounds. Uh, Mr. Baidu does the uh, primary market. If you, uh, if a company is set up and wants to have financing, do VC and PE. Uh, that is, we need to find a fund manager like Mr. Bai. And well, uh, for accountants, we do secondary market. That is, when you got the investor's money, you need to uh, find uh, more monetization. And you can go to mainland China stock market or Hong Kong stock exchange or US uh, all kinds of stock exchanges. That is where our accounting people have stepped in. So and it means our accounting uh, people uh, can really help you arrange uh, those uh, financial statements and uh, offer an accounting report today. I'm very happy and uh, very happy to, to be invited by the organizing committee because uh, 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 before the blockchain and AI, people believe that accounting will be uh, phased out because with AI, people do not need any accounting. So I feel while the organizing committee is really giving me a lot of attention and uh, giving me pride, uh, let's talk to you about the capital market uh, talk. And so my topic is AI capital market and the future outlook. So I'll give you several uh, introductions to the AI relevant and the blockchain relevant uh, companies. And um, also list the company's uh, 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 conditions. So I'll also talk to you about uh, uh, the company's uh, opportunities and their challenges in after they are listed in different markets. So a little bit about our company. I. So actually, uh, so I've been working in PwC for 18 years um, doing accounting. And uh, I joined, I, I actually was involved uh, in a lot of uh, Hong Kong listing and uh, uh, other countries listing of many companies that have been listed. So uh, I'll just skip the AI. AI is something no string to you. Second part, I'll talk to you about uh, the listed companies and their performances. And this is a list uh, of the uh, Shanghai Stock Exchange and uh, the existing uh, market uh, as a, as a entities and their uh, stock is like a high division like Ipola Tech and actually as the Han Wuji or the Cambry Kong and uh, these, all these companies that are really air companies listed in Asia market and Hong Kong US Stock Exchange they are big companies uh, very most famous is the Sense Time Sense Time is our customer for PwC, and when, before it was launched, uh, as a issue and price, uh, corresponds to a, a, a value of uh, uh, 120 billion uh, Hong Kong dollars at the peak. Its market cap is uh, valued at the peak of 300 billion US uh, Hong Kong dollars, and uh, now it's just uh, 50 to 80, 60 billion. Because people have high expectations, but uh, the all con due to performances and market conditions, people fail uh, these uh, expectations fail to be met. So there, uh, the, uh, there was reduction of people's expectation of the market cap of system. The other uh, companies that are also uh, going uh, through listing, like the, uh, the uh, like the, uh, yeah, other companies like MacV and E two, and four paradigms. So next, uh, let's talk about. Uh, some uh, the AI changes in the stock market. Most important thing is uh, the uh, the definition 
and the requirement uh, for Chinese company listed in foreign company uh, companies uh, countries that is a new one and um, issued uh, this March. If you do AI or do web in your company, most of these companies or most of you want to get listed in the Hong Kong um, stock exchange or the U.S. Uh, stock market because U.S. Uh, for very high valuations and uh, this requirement uh, has a uh, high importance to you and that is uh, if in the future any company that wants to uh, uh, that other company that operates mainly in mainland China it is not defined in CRSRC I to talk about 30% um, it's defined as a main and uh, if it's listed in foreign country my stock exchange we need to go through the China's uh, CSRC's uh, uh, registration. That is, if a company, the structure is overseas, all the companies are overseas, just the main business is happening uh, uh, happening inside via a VIE structure. In the past, uh, the uh, CSRC does not uh, uh, monitor you because it uh, doesn't care if you get listed in Thailand or Hong Kong or USA. But uh, beginning from uh, beginning from this March to uh, 31st, uh, uh, CSRC requires uh, new registration key requirements uh, for overseas offerings and listings. And as we all know, CSRC is a very strong regulatory watchdog, and you need to answer a variety of the questions if you are going to ask a filing. It's not just a copy, not that simple. Many questions will be queried. And if you're familiar with the approval, uh, many of the questions they ask is very specific, especially for the BC or AI player in terms of the cyber security, the privacy protection, as well as the overseas, uh, the server and which data are on cloud, which ones are within uh, the China. And uh, they will ask very specifically these questions. So, which means in the future, if uh, your main operating body are in uh, mainland, if you want to go public in the States, you must discuss with your lawyers specifically on data protection. When you have individual data, when you really have a lot of individual players, you have the name, ID card, smartphone number, we will collect the data as normal, right? Uh, we, because it is required as a real name system, you have the ICP, uh, you are required to do so. We have these data in place, and if you want to go IPO, uh, you have to be uh, compliant with the Chinese PIPA, PIPA, very hard. Another thing uh, to add is that when it comes to the internet players, uh, they collect the data from you, uh, many of which have the ICP certificate. When you have the ICP certificate, uh, the foreign players cannot directly control the stocks. And we will build the VIE of as that. Yes, we are familiar with VIE, uh, and uh, if you want to get a filing and uh, pass the filing, and uh, it's called G two. The G two is the only one uh, passed uh, the approval of CSRC. The others failed to do so. So in the future, whether it will happen or not, uh, we are waiting for observation. Yeah, you know, this is so important, especially if you have the main operations in China. If you want to go public in overseas market, especially in the states. You must must be careful, very careful. Uh, CSRC believe uh, whether you have a IPO uh, in Hong Kong or in mainland China in Hong Kong is much less stringent. Okay, if you don't want to go to uh, IPO, go IPO in overseas. You want to have an IPO in mainland. The PE is very high in Asia market. Very frequent trading, even more frequent. And I have very good uh, liquidity, uh, easy to have access to the fund, right? And uh, I have something to ask you, uh, especially uh, in, in the Chinese market has the uniqueness uh, because the review and our audit uh, is uh, very, very stringent. If you know about uh, the market, uh, we are also having the so-called filing-based management, but compared to that in Hong Kong and the States, that is totally different. Uh, I'm not allowed to write it on a uh, PowerPoint. So on the CSRC, uh, if you want to say it is different tomorrow, I may lose my job. It, it shall be written. But you need to know 
especially it is totally different. It is still based on a specific examination or inspection, which is very, very uh, stringent. Uh, I can share with you something which may be difficult to be understood when it comes to Chinese stock market. Uh, if you want to go public, we need to check the individual uh, bank uh, in an uh, inbound, outbound uh, statement. Uh, see, this is something overseas investors cannot uh, actually accept. So the very uh, individual, uh, the personal flow of your money in and out, and if it exceeds uh, 50,000 RMB per transaction, you must explain, uh, especially why and how it happened. It's difficult to be understood and understand. You know, for AI-related players, and many people selected to go star market for IPO. This year, we also have a policy dynamics change. If you're familiar with Chinese uh, policies, and uh, that will not be a specific document that we are going to make change. Looks like exactly the same, but there will be a window guidance, so called, yeah, as I already mentioned. Window guidance uh, is something that will tell you how to follow new policies. Yeah, the new policy is that, especially for AI player uh, in the star market at present, they will not accept Ross making company. If you are not making money, uh, so it's challenging, uh, nearly uh, unlikely. And also, again, when you're talking about uh, the R&D uh, for companies very high and heavy, within a short period of view, uh, you may not even uh, actually be covered. The, the, but this is the status quo of the financing environment. And after you go public uh, for your major uh, 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 stock holders, and uh, if you want to reduce your stock holding, there are some uh, requirements uh, because uh, you can trade uh, that uh, after the uh, it went IPO. But for the major stock holders, that's also a very strong one. And uh, again, and uh, uh, you have three years the locking period of time at, and then uh, as long if it is even below the IPO price dropped to that, there's a so many different scenarios. It will not benefit the individual uh, retailer investors if that would happen. The, ma the major investors and also the major uh, the stockholders are prohibited from making any uh, stock holding reduction. Let's move on to about talking about the states where we have the best platform for fundraising. Undoubtedly true. Yeah, all of the uh, AI company in the U.S. has great uh, the. Uh, momentum of stock price increased. They really favor high tech company for fundraising. It has very uh, great liquidity, transparent uh, environment, filing uh, based system. You can write everything in the prospectus, and the investors will make a decision whether it's correct or not. And if you disclose, uh, if it fails to disclose it, it will, you will be held accountable. It, it is not the accountable. Uh, uh, the accountant will, will be held accountable, not likely in China. It's an excellent market in the States. But I have to say recently, Another uh, two uh, act, uh, which is uh, China unfriendly. Uh, first, the Biden administration has signed the II and uh, for the U.S. fund. Yeah, the U.S. fund uh, are not allowed to invest uh, the AI-related industry. So when it comes to uh, restricted area, uh, including mainland Hong Kong and Macau, these are the only three restricted area. Biden executive order on Chinese AI. So when you want to have access to the U.S. fund, U.S. dollar based funder, you need to understand whether you can own that. When you talk to an investor for a long time, but uh, finally they say, "Oh, I cannot. We are not allowed. We are not qualified. What about taking your registration to Hong Kong? No, it's not allowed. Singapore, maybe yes, but uh, if you are making the investment, uh, that will be a penetration, right? Because you need to go." U.S. for IPO afterwards, and if it's not well aligned with the U.S. laws and regulations, your IPO plan uh, will fail, right? So this is really the investment ban in China. Uh, the next one is that if Chinese enterprises, if they're going to go public in the States, there's a lot of requirement of disclosure. What's very challenging is similar in that in China, especially they are very strict, uh, stringent, the disclosure of, of personal information. It's not about the data you have, uh, but uh, but it's the data not of Chinese, but whether the data of the Americans will be transmitted to China as well. It's a two-way street. It's politics. That's the uh, sequence we are suffering from. If there's individual data related, 
uh, both the U.S. government, Chinese government, are paying a lot of attention to that. That means uh, you, you really need to communicate uh, very well, and how you are gonna deal with that. That means you need to do this work uh, very early. Uh, if it is too close uh, to a skill stage, it will become very difficult. The data cannot be transferred overnight. Data will have to be You may not delete them and transfer it 100% to your new, uh, especially uh, the server. We know uh, the data uh, transfer transmission is far from being that easy. It cannot happen that quickly. This is about the US market. Last but not least, to talk about Hong Kong market. Yeah, uh, especially it's a great uh, mainstream market in the past, but recently Hong Kong is also in the forefront uh, of the uh, U.S.-China uh, financial war. Uh, the liquidity here in Hong Kong is very bad. And we know over 40% of Hong Kong stock, and you can see the daily uh, volume of trade is less than $100,000. Uh, uh, so uh, even for since time, uh, as an example, their profitability is below. Uh, actually, uh, the profitability, their market cap should not be as low as just 40, 50, actually, a billion dollars. But we do face up the challenges, the result of the po political conflict. For the sake of increasing the trade volume and liquidity, there are many uh, tools. We are talking about uh, SGC. And uh, no, we are talking about different types uh, of that. One of which is about uh, uh, metaverse and AI related players. So for the players within this industry, even if you are not making money, even when you don't, didn't have any income, but under some specific circumstances, where you'll be qualified for go public, it's called 18C. That is from 18C, you know, where it has uh, give you this uh, op options. And uh, again, we are very, uh, having high expectation for that, yeah, it's quite innovative. Those companies are uh, without income, not making money, and uh, they already are covered as a uh, uh, opportunity for IPO, increasing liquidity, more access to uh, fundraisings, improving innovations. But uh, when the rule was put in place in the first half of this year, uh, and uh, the final criteria was set too high, it's below people's expectation on the right side. It is shown here, and here it is divided into two parts. Two parts, one is for the commercial net company with uh, incomes. Uh, it is uh, actually two, uh, 250 billion. And also uh, you need to reach six billion uh, after IPO, very high. And if you have no income, and uh, let's put aside of, uh, even uh, the profitability, you need to reach also the 10 billion after you went public. Such a requirement is very high. This is our market cap. There are any other requirements, criteria, or any expenditure on investors, etc. I listed the market cap requirement. Many people gave up. And even for the accounting firm, accounting agents, uh, law firms, we are writing actually to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange to lower the threshold. Not only is about the 18C for high tech players, but the overarching are uh, the the entry level, I mean, that threshold should be lowered. And there is a working group established on the relevant topic. So this what this is why I'm going to uh, disclose to you. The threshold here may be lowered. And once it will be lowered, we will have more opportunities to leverage Hong Kong uh, to make more uh, investment, uh, uh, to let uh, investors exit and let the company make money. And you must be compliant with this, the filing requirement of CSRC. And it must be gentle compared to that in uh, states. And including the requirement, uh, the uh, questions will not be that sharp. Okay. Thanks to the time limitation, I'm going to skip some of the others. Yeah, because time is up. For me, I really appreciate uh, all of you. I will appreciate the organizer for giving me the opportunity to introduce uh, the market. And I hope that for AI or blockchain players, uh, you will grow uh, successfully and offer a great product. Let me retire earlier. Thank you.